everybody. Welcome to another episode of LinkedIn Office Hours Live. Uh, I'm your host, Robbie Kelman Baxter. Thank you for tuning in. In today's, in today's session, we'll be talking about how to build your own brand as a thought leader. Now, of course, the best time to have begun starting your own brand as a thought leader is the minute you started working, the minute you started thinking about your career, the minute you started developing ideas. Maybe that's a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. But the second best time to start building your brand as a thought leader is right now. And we're really lucky today because we have a real expert on building a brand as a thought leader, um, Denise Rousseau. If you want to be seen as a thought leader, you need to invest in the right activities uh, consistently and over time. And you know, today, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. Denise is the CEO of the Thought Leadership Lab. She's also a keynote speaker, a thought leadership strategist, an author, an executive coach, and of course, a LinkedIn learning instructor. Um, and we're going to make her course and my course available to you for free in the chat today. So, uh, so check them both out. Um, and, uh, you know, today what we're going to do is um, use Denise's expertise and um, what she's written about and spoken about. And I'm going to share my perspective as well. And of course, we want to hear from you. So, you know, please feel free to let us know uh, where you're where you are today. Uh, what's on your mind, and we'll do our best to uh, to answer all your questions and bring as many people as possible into the conversation. Um, without further ado, um, I'd like to invite Denise Brousseau to join me. Uh, her area of deep expertise is thought leadership. She works with entrepreneurs, executives, and teams on thought leadership strategies, increasing influence, building brands, gaining recognition for innovations and big ideas, so that we can all advance our careers and have lives of significance. So without further ado, uh, welcome, Denise. Hey, Robbie, great to see you. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. So I wanna start by asking you kind of a very basic question. What does it mean to be a thought leader? Well, it's one of those more powerful questions, the simpler it is, isn't it, right? When, when we think <laughs> When we think about thought leadership, I think of it as really a journey. And it, it begins with building that brand, building that brand as someone who stands out for themselves versus the sort of normal folks around them and really can differentiate themselves and get known. And then I think sort of the second step is to get known for our expertise. So becoming that sort of respected expert. And that is a very important piece of this journey so that people come to us and rely on us for our knowledge and expertise. And then I think it's sort of third step is thought leadership. So the third step of thought leadership is we are really trying to transform or uh, shift the conversation or get people to act in new ways or think in new ways around a particular topic or arena. So I think about it as being that pebble in the pond, someone who can share and shift ideas and, and shift the way people think and act. And I think that's really how we measure thought leadership is, are you getting people to think newly and act in new ways? Yeah, really interesting. So kind of a three-step process um, that you kind of work work your way through, um, you know, first building your own brand and then really sharing it with others and, and getting really clear on who you are and what your expertise is and how you can um, share that, share that with other with other people. Um, do I have that right? Yeah, I mean, I think about it even, well, let's talk about you. You and I have known each other for years and you think about when you started talking about the membership economy for the first time, it really was a major differentiator from everyone else in the market space. People came to you for that expertise, but then you actually really transformed it to, you know, this needs to be a much broader conversation. So talk about how how that shifted for you. Yeah, well, it's definitely true. So, so my story, and and I know you know this, but um, and and some of the people I see, I see that are listening that I know, know have heard this, but I'll I'll share it. You know, I, I started in in you know uh, consulting and the, as a big firm strategy consultant at Booz Allen. Then I went into product management. I got laid off when I was on maternity leave, and I said I need to be in control of my own career. At this point, I had not, I didn't, I never even heard the expression thought leader. I didn't know what that was, um, but. 
I got some advice. I started working pretty much now I would call it as a contractor. I came in and I did strategy work, marketing work, whatever I could do that I felt like I had the right toolkit for that somebody would pay me for, usually on an hourly basis, um, really just subbing in, in kind of the way I was an employee at another company. And then somebody told me, you know, if you really want to be a consultant, you have to be a thought leader. And of course, I'm like, what is a thought leader? They said, you have to be an expert, right? They're like, either you're going to build a consulting firm where you have a lot of people who can pop in and act as contractors and act as part-time workers and do certain things for people, or you have to become an expert. And for me, you know, when I was at Booz Allen, I was an expert in strategy. So I, that was my first thought, I'll be an expert in strategy. But I found that that was such a big topic that it was hard to claim credibility. And so I thought, what is narrow enough that I can credibly be an expert on it, that I can really cover the gamut? And at the same time, what is wide enough that, you know, it's juicy and interesting and I can continue to grow in that space. And so honestly, Denise, for about three years, I really wasn't sure what my thought leadership, where it was going to be. I sort of wrote on things I knew. I meditated on, you know, what do I know? You know, I'd write on, you know, how to build a good marketing plan best practices in product management, uh, why meetings are a waste of time, whatever, just whatever came into my mind to get into the habit of thinking about what are my ideas? What's my point of view? What have I learned? And then, as you know, my fifth client um, as an independent consultant was Netflix. And I mean, I just fell in love. I said, this, the way that their business model works, the way that they build long-term relationships with their customers, the way that they can charge subscription pricing and get that beautiful recurring revenue, that is all the things that I find interesting. And it's also what I believe in because, you know, at the root of subscriptions is a forever promise, right? You have to continue delivering day after day. You can't just sell them the big product and then it's their problem. And so it has a lot to do with, you know, kind of being ethical, being relationship oriented, focusing on the long term, which are things that were meaningful to me personally. Um, but it took it was definitely a journey, right? Because when I was working in consulting at a big firm and when I was working in product management, I had a good reputation in those companies. I had a, a brand in those companies in the context of the work I did, but I didn't have a brand that traveled with me. And what I love about this this journey that you were on is that it is also the journey that many of us need to take and to find that niche, to find that, or niche as some people say, to find that spot where it's sort of an intersection of what, what our expertise, our experiences are, um, and what we're very deeply committed to, and something that really aligns to the trends that are happening in the marketplace. Like you can be this incredible thought leader over here in something that nobody is paying any attention to, to me, kind of a waste of time or if in a really, really tiny niche. So I really will always advocate that part of this beginning phase of laying that groundwork for thought leadership is doing some of that inner work. Like what is it matters to me? What lights me up as well? Looking at sort of the outside, what are some of the projects that I'm working on? What are some of the initiatives that I was a part of? What is a uh, something that I have underway that gets me lit up? But also something that I feel like has that sort of longer term trend line. Um, and I think that back to one of my very first clients, you know, she was working in workforce development, not very sexy, but when workforce she started development. talking, right? I mean, it's super important, but you know, not everybody gets up in the morning and Google's workforce development, right? But instead, when she started talking about green jobs at a time when green jobs, the green jobs initiative was happening nationally, now suddenly she can become that more prominent, uh, knowledgeable expert that, and the truth was a lot of what she was working on was green jobs. So it's this idea of finding that niche that you have some particular expertise that you're committed to, align it with something that's happening, that matters, and something where you will stick to it, because this isn't something that happens overnight. Yeah, that's uh, so many good, I mean, you bring up uh, some, some really good points. One of them is you know, I think a lot of times when people are trying to figure out where where they want to be a brand leader, what where, where they want to be a thought leader, they they start with their functional area, right? I do HR. Uh, I'm a I'm a recruiter. I'm a product manager. I can do that, but the, it's almost like by going narrower and by connecting it with something a bigger trend that is of interest, figuring out the intersection of a lot of different things that you're interested in, and also that the market's interested in. Um, when I when I started focusing yeah. on subscriptions, I remember thinking this has to be something that is big enough that it's going to be interesting for me and that it's going to happen for a while.
but also it has to be narrow enough and specific enough that it's relevant, that people can remember what I do and who I am. So, you know, it, the more words in your description, the less easy it's going to, you know, the more ands, let me just say that, the more ands <laughs> in your description, the, the harder it's going to be for someone to remember you. Um, and so, you know, I, I want to just pause here because we are live and we have, a you know, a hundred and some odd people that have joined us um, from from Lagos, Nigeria, from Czech Republic, uh, from New Jersey, uh, Ravanesh from Sydney, Simon from the UK. I mean, really a, a global group and, and welcome everyone. Um, I'd love to just pause here and ask people, you know, are, do you feel like you're a thought leader? If so, what is your area of, of expertise? And if not, why is it important now? And um you know, I, I'd love to keep an eye on, on the, the comments and, and what your thoughts are on that. And then meanwhile, I'm going to I'm going to ask Denise another question. Um, you know, why does this matter if you're in a big organization? I, I know why. And we just talked about why does it matter as a solopreneur? Um, obviously, because that's how you get clients. That's how people hear about you. That's your magnet that attracts people to you. But why does it matter if you say, look, I, I work at Salesforce, you know, I, I work at um, you know, Jagran in, the, in in India. I work at a big company. I don't I don't need um, a brand because all the people that matter know who I am. Well, I, I think about it as this journey of transformation that almost every company on the globe seems to be going through really requires people who have a differentiation around some particular arena so that you, you're not the worker bee, but instead somebody who is bringing something to the, the change that is underway. And to me, being a thought leader is really all about being a change agent. Right. When I think about leadership, it's sort of one to many. Who are those people that you said, sort of those direct connections, the people who you know, you touch, you see, maybe you manage. Those are sort of that. That's leadership. You need to get them to march in the same direction. Thought leadership is many to many. So if you're really trying to transform, it isn't enough for you to say to the people around you, this is what needs to change. You need to inspire them to pick up that idea and carry it forward. That's many to many, that's the thought leadership, that's that pebble in the pond. Well, how does that happen? We need to be much more effective communicators than just, hey, let's sit at the table right now and I'll tell you what needs to be done. We need to potentially be storytellers. We need to set that vision of the future. We need to be inspiring and energizing people to make that transformation possible. If you have a particular area of expertise and can bring some of those skills, which really are the skills of a thought leader, then you are going to be um, really enabling transformation and moving it more quickly. Hopefully also building those best practices and frameworks and toolkits along the way so that, that we're not, this division is just transforming and then this one never caught up because we never shared what we learned over here or we never identified the tools and the practices that we um, really put in underway as we transform. So I think those, again, those are the skill sets of a transformational leader or a thought leader. Yeah, really interesting, the connection between transformational leader and being a thought leader. Um, and so I guess, you know, the important thing here, you know, as I said in the opening, um, you know, the best time to become a thought leader is at the beginning of your career. And the second best time to become a thought leader is is right now. Um, and for people who are just starting out right now, I think you've given some really good tips on how to identify an area of expertise and how to start building on it and how to um, project your voice, you know, many to many as opposed to, you know, sort of just heads down, do your job and, and uh, you know, check expect to-do list. Which yeah, you check your to-do list. Um, and, and I think I would add, and, and I think you were alluding to it with the many-to-many, -many, that that having a network becomes really important, that, that the people who know you, um, the people who understand what you're good at, and that the, when they talk about you, like one of the ways you know if you have a good brand is, is how other people talk about you. Absolutely. Like it's one thing for you to say, I am a thought leader in X, which by the way, you actually shouldn't say until someone else really decides that. <laughs> We're saying that on a regular Hi, basis. I'm a thought leader. My name is Robbie. I'm a thought leader. I lead thoughts for everybody. <laughs> That's a little dangerous and can get you, you know, that label of big headed and uh, maybe a few other things, which we won't say in public. But instead, if you are really um, taking people along on this journey of um, the, the experience of you as somebody who is consistent, that has a clear point of view that they can identify, you know, in the old days, it used to be, I know a gal that can handle that, or I know a guy that knows that, right? 
okay, that's good in a small community or a small um, company. But once you get to a global company, which many people are working for, or even one that's continuing to, to change, you know, acquire other companies, whatever the transformation is that's going on, you need to have a reputation that people repeat and people are much more broadly um, agreeing to. And that only happens, I think, once we start defining not just a point of view, but we do start codifying some of our, our expertise in, I don't know, a video or a talk or um, some sort of public forum and uh, becoming known as that person who we can reliably look to for what's happening today, but also where we need to go in the future. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's it's interesting that you, you bring up this point. Um, you know, I, I'm looking at some of the comments and um, I see this comment from from Brooke Coleman. Um, and I'm hoping that Nat, our fabulous assistant, can can pop that one up on the screen. Um, she says, I, I do have a thought leadership position, but my voice isn't heard loud enough. Um, people matter. I've realized in large vituperations, people get lost in the shuffle. And so you know, what I want to ask you, Denise, is what do you do if you feel like I have this expertise, I feel like I have something to offer, but people aren't hearing it? You started to allude to some of the ways that you can um, amplify your your ideas. How do you, How do you do that? Amplify is one of my favorite words in the world, right? Because the way we get people to pay attention to our voice is we start paying attention to other people's voices that are talking within our particular area of expertise, our niche, right? That if we see somebody who's got something interesting to say and bringing forward some of the best of the best, like being that curator and amplifier of some of the best information, now they're going to start paying attention to us. So I think that's one strategy. Second is doing something like this, like you've done a brilliant job of bringing together experts who are at the periphery of your expertise and who share a common uh, underlying platform like LinkedIn, and now bringing us together to talk. Now we're kind of riding on each other's platforms. We're like sharing the microphone, as we call it. That's a really important thought leadership strategy to share the microphone. Now you get to you know, you get access to my network, I get access to your network, and everybody sees how incredible um, our knowledge and expertise is that maybe they've never heard of before. So I think that's an effective strategy, and it can be useful to do it, you know, invite people on a podcast, interview people, do it on a LinkedIn Live. There's a lot of different tools to use. So I think those are some of the ways. And then I'd say the third is, is really being that convener. You know, if you really are going to transform anything. You need people at the table, right? They all need to have the same, what I call singing out of the same songbook, right? They need to have the same shared message, understanding of the future, and a uh, shared commitment to making that transformation possible. So if you don't have the uh, expertise or interest in being sort of external facing, bring people to the table and uh, set the agenda, set that table for people to begin to come together and make agreements that, that they will carry forward to all of their communities. Again, pebble in the pond. We want to get lots of people saying the same thing in order to transform anything. Yeah, yeah. There's So there's some, some great points and great places to get started um, that I think are really helpful that you, that you mentioned. So you know, using LinkedIn as a platform is great and using um, LinkedIn Live as a as a tool is fantastic. Um, one really great example that if you haven't seen, you, you might want to check out just as an example of how to think about thought leadership or what to do is Shavi Shi, um, who uh, is a product manager for LinkedIn. Um, she had transferred mid-career into product management. So for the last year, she's been doing podcasts or doing uh, LinkedIn Lives and doing a newsletter about best practices if you want to get into product management and how to ramp up in a new role in product management. So she wasn't necessarily a thought leader in that space because she was just learning, but she was a convener and she was getting best practices from experts. She was reaching out to experts and bringing them in and sharing mm -hmm. her community with them. Um, now, as she has you know, been a product manager for a while and actually knows a lot, her her content is increasingly sophisticated around, you know, what expert product managers do as opposed to getting started in product management. And I think it's a beautiful example, you know, when you say, well, I don't know if I'm really, you know, like Denise, you said, you know, you don't say you're a product manager, you don't say you're a thought leader, you wait for someone else to say it. If you're in that position, you might say, you know what, I am a person 
who cares a lot about whatever the topic is. And I'm bringing people together. I'm curating ideas. I see that Jana said, you know, I love the idea of being a curator. Yeah, you can, that's a great place to, to start. Um, it's also a great place if you've been doing this for a while to say, I'm gonna curate things. I'm gonna make a list of the top 10 voices in my space, right? Top 10 voices in leadership, top 10 voices in subscription. Um, five trends that I'm following that I think are interesting. Those kinds of things and, attract people. Yeah. And add your point of view, right? It's great to Absolutely. put the list together, but why do they matter? Like, what is it they're bringing to the table? That's where you can add your own perspective. And I really like this example you're using because I think about it as being that guide from the side instead of that sage from the stage. We wait. We wait. Oh, I love we that. Wait. wait, say that again. Say that we again, because that's so we good. We want to be the guide from the side, not the sage from the stage. And here's what I mean by that. Like, we don't want to wait until we have it all buttoned up and we're perfect experts and we've got the PhD and, you know, whatever, 53 credentials. No, we want to know the journey. Like, we want to come with you on the journey. I love this example. Years ago, I, I met this just two years ago. I met this guy who was developing a uh, autonomous vehicle for one of the companies here in the Valley. And he literally took people every single step of the way as they tested the equipment that he showed building this this first demo car every single day you'd have a little video or a picture or something and people were fascinated because I mean how would I have that experience otherwise so we do want to take we want people to take us on the journey I do want to jump back to a question that came a minute ago from India uh, thank you how do you help organizations with their thought leadership and how is that different to helping individuals you know I think that is a question that actually was something that came up a lot after my first course came out, which is really about how do you become a thought leader as an individual? So I created a whole separate course on thought leading organizations and developed a number of frameworks and toolkits on that. So I do think that there are some specific tactics that we as leaders can do to help our own organization. But honestly, a lot of the basics are similar. Like, do you have a particular niche in order to differentiate from just being I'm marketing, 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 everything about how fabulous we are. Do we have a particular niche we want to be known in? And do we have a particular future that we are committed to bringing about? Sometimes that can be a global cause, you know, we're committed to doing something around poverty in our community or homelessness or whatever, but it also could be, of course, making that transformation in whatever our industry, Let's say you're one of the first SaaS companies, you're trying to get other people on board with that transformation. So it starts, I think, with niche. And then, of course, you know, the course actually outlines a whole lot of great steps that you as an individual can do and some of the uh, frames and ways to think about it. And, of course, some of the heavy lifting that it's going to take to get people on board. Yeah. And we will... Um... I think we unlocked uh, Denise's course on for the individual, but we will also unlock her other course um, and make it available here in the chat uh, so that you can access it for free. And the way that those free um, accesses work on LinkedIn is you get access from the time you start using the course for 24 hours. So pick a time when you're able to focus. Um, I think the courses run mostly under an hour, um, but that's our, that's our about an hour and a half, I think. So yeah, oh. you know, set aside some time. Okay. Set aside some time and you'll probably want to reflect afterwards and so maybe give yourself a chunk of time. Perfect for a weekend or an evening or um, any time. Perfect really. for a weekend. Lots of downloadable sheets and worksheets and things that you can take to your uh, team to help you make that progress. Yeah, but really, I mean, an, an interesting question. Also thinking about, you know, if you're in a big company, um, I know something that I worried about when I was in a big company. It's been it's been a little while, but uh, am I allowed to do this? Am I allowed to, you know, have my own opinion? Um, what if it, you know, can I talk about the company? If I'm, you know, if I'm doing product management for, you know, Google, am I allowed to talk about that? So there are some, I think, I don't know, legal, regulatory, uh, HR kinds of issues, but at the same time, there's a lot of green space where I think you, you can share your own opinion. Do you, have you had experience with that, Denise, with people that are worried oh, about, funny speaking out absolutely well in from the very first from the very first person i worked with who was um, in a utility company where there was just a very very strict set of guidelines but there were not strict guidelines on doing the convening so she did a lot of convening and the second thing that wasn't any guidelines on was talking about sort of the bigger story right so is the 
she had to very much get everything approved if she talked about the particular workforce development initiatives that were happening within her own um, organization. But as she talked about her industry transforming in this particular arena, or she talked about green jobs more broadly, there was no uh, you know, no regulations. She wasn't allowed to use social media, but she was allowed to speak. So you do want to find out, you know, go to your comms department. If you don't have one, talk to the founder or the CEO, um, find out who else is uh, being that representative for the organization and make sure that your messages are aligned or speak about something completely different. This is where that global citizen role can come in handy. If I go and talk about women's leadership, for example, as a woman leader, most companies are fine with that. So thinking about what is it that I'm committed to outside my particular job arena that isn't gonna be limited by any kind of regulatory guidelines or other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The other thing I would add, I think these are really good points. The other thing I would add is you can watch, and I mean, LinkedIn is so developed now. I think, you know, five years ago or 10 years ago, it was harder because if you were on LinkedIn, you were probably the first in your company. But now you can go see like, what is leadership doing? How much are they talking? What are they talking about? If they've talked about it, I can probably have an opinion. I can comment on what they're saying um, and bring my own, my own spin. So that is also a very safe way um, to build your brand from inside the company. I, I want to shift gears because I see this question um, from Praveen. Uh, what are some recommendations as an individual to influence others so that they'll see you as a thought leader? Wow, that's a, such a good question. And, and honestly, it's always about consistency, consistency of voice, meaning that we're saying from a similar brand voice perspective, like one day we're not trying to be super funny and clever and then this next day we're super academic and serious, like finding a brand voice that we can consistently hold to. Secondly, being consistent so that you're consistently sharing ideas in, in, in a variety of forums. Third, finding um, some followers. In other words, the, it can't just be that um, you're the only one saying this. So you want to start to think about who else agrees with me already? Who else might be at least peripherally interested and involved in something that uh, I'm involved in? How can I now start to echo their voices and have them echo mine? Did you? Th what, what do you think, Robbie? What else should people be doing? Yeah, I think these are these are great. Your point about you know people do need to be following you um, is really um, important. Um, some of the ways that you can kind of get around that is. I think find your peers. Like you've, you've brought this up a couple of times. I want to just call that out. So who else is talking about the topic that you, this is advice I always give people. Who else is talking about your topic and do they know you? So comment on their stuff, reach out to them. Hey, I also am involved in Dow or, you know, I'm also involved in safety. Um, here's some of the work I've done. I'd love to, to find a way to collaborate. Maybe we can do a live. Maybe we can write an article together, whatever. Um, but you start to have other people who know about you who have credibility and they're the ones that will eventually maybe say, you know, Denise is a thought, you know, I said some nice things about Denise that, you know, being a thought leader, being, you know, one of the best in the business, she can use that. She can say, Robbie Baxter says X, Y, Z. Um, she no longer has to say it herself. Um, so, you know, to summarize, you know, finding your peers, um, making sure that they know who you are, um, is a really good way to get people to start talking about being consistent with your message um, and describing yourself that way. You don't have to say, I'm a thought leader in XYZ, but you can say like something that I said from the very beginning, I study subscriptions. I research I subscriptions. I specialize in, yes, right. I, I specialize in, I study, yeah. I've spent a long time in, um, I swim in the space of, and I'm a change start, agent is another one. I'm a change agent in the arena and then tell them your arena, which is often a couple of overlapping areas. Yeah, yeah. And you just want to make, I mean, one of the big mistakes, and we've, we've kind of alluded to this a few times that I think people make, is their, their area of expertise is too long and too vague and people can't remember it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I remember somebody early in my career who said, you know, I fix broken call centers. And 20 years later, I remember that right? I fix broken call centers. You're like, okay, I understand <laughs> where your expertise lies. Um, very different than, you know, I do, you know, uh, you know, customer service uh, support and operations. And I also know a lot about call center technology. And I also know about, you know, pithy, pithy, differentiated, memorable, 
um, and focus on the future. Like I really like to encourage yes. people. To, you know, here's where I am committed to bringing about a world like this, right? I want a world where. X, Y, Z is going to happen. So for me, as I first became a, what I call an accidental thought leader, it was really committed to more access to, for capital for women entrepreneurs. But I would say it as I'm committed to a future where 50% of the venture capital funding in the United States goes to women entrepreneurs. And now people are like, mm, I'm committed to that future too. Let me get on board versus, hey, I, you know, I work with women entrepreneurs. Like they, there's no yeah. room there. A people mission. Need the future. They yeah. need that vision, that future. I call it the what if future. What if... 51, yeah. actually, I used to say 51% of venture money was going to go to women. And we're still at about 2%. I love that. This morning, very painful. That's the world. Mm -hmm. That's the world we want to, we want to, we want to strive for. Um, Janice um, has a great tip. Um, she says, LinkedIn has a new feature with a little bell at the top of profiles. So you can follow specific people and be sure to get their posts. Then you can comment softly. This is a way of joining the conversation becoming another voice. And then as your voice gets louder, and I think Denise and I both had this experience, first we were the ones that were adding our voice to the song, and now we're more song leaders. We've been doing this a long time. We've been pretty focused. Um, there's there's sort of different roles that you play um, over time. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, um, there's so many good comments here and I, I, I want to, you know, make sure that we're, we're, you know, sharing some of them. Uh, Valentine says, I love sharing the microphone. Every speaker engagement, uh, and Dan, if you can pop this up, every speaker engagement came through a deep philosophical dialogue with other speakers who recommended me, right? You can't, okay. Hashtag pro tip. If you want to be a speaker, do not call the places that are hiring speakers and say, you should hire me. It almost never works. What does work is for a past speaker or somebody on the speakers committee or somebody that works in that organization to say, I think we should take a look at Denise. Um, so what does that mean for you? If you want your voice to be heard, sometimes it does. it's more helpful for somebody else to recommend you, um, somebody else to know about you and to, to lift up your voice, which means on the one hand, you know, you're depending on others for their support and building relationships. And on the other hand, it is good karma that when you get there and you have things that you can offer, um, you want to do that. And, and probably, I'm actually going to rephrase that, probably you have things to offer other people right now, things right. that you can do for Here's them. The it's such an important yes. strategy as a, as a thought leader yes. or aspiring thought leader to share your microphone and look for the underserved, under, under recognized, um, underheard voices uh, and bring them forward. I, I saw a great uh, Instagram di full day last two years ago um, in which a number of major prominent Instagram voices shared their microphone with a number of folks who were in the Black Lives Matter movement who had not yet been heard. And it was, they got the whole full day to take over that person's social media and you know, get their voice heard. A brilliant strategy. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And um, uh, Lizzo, who I love, um, just did that at the People's Choice Award. She brought 20 women activists wow. onto the stage and used her speaker time to introduce every one of them. She must have had it arranged wow. first because they were all literally on the stage. They all looked amazing. And she introduced <laughs> each one of them. Um, and I was like, that's so generous and that's so valuable. Beautiful. And these are people who share her what if, right? They share her what if vision. So right. I love that. We're we're out of time. The 30 minutes went like that. And now here I am going over. Um, but Denise, can you stay for two or three more minutes so we can just kind of close this out? Sure. Of course. Yeah. So so what advice do you want to leave people with? What what do you want them to to remember about today? And and what do you want them to do? next if they want to be a thought leader and they want to make it make a change? I think the very first and most important thing, which honestly, we really haven't focused much on is the mindset, right? We need to get into the mindset that this is a journey that we're all on, that we all can take that next step. We can find some help from, from some allies around us who can help us uh, on our journey and that this isn't you don't need a secret decoder ring. You don't need a PhD. You don't need any of that stuff, right? That this is about finding your own voice and being brave enough to share your own perspective and share the future that you're committed to. And then find find your people, find the folks who are equally share, committed to that, because that really is the most fun part of the journey is to find others <laughs> who are 
the journey with you. And I think if this isn't fun, we don't do that, stick to it and all of the other things we've talked about. But uh, assume that this is for you, that this isn't for someone else, that this is for you and trust your own voice, trust your own perspective and your own ideas. I think if that is your 2023 commitment to yourself, that's going to be the very best commitment you can have. Awesome. Find your mission, find your voice, find your people and trust yourself. Um, great, great way to, to sum up today. Um, thanks everybody for, for joining us today for Office Hours. I'll be back on Tuesday at 9 a.m. with a special guest, Scott Pollack, talking about business development, how to create partnerships with other organizations. Um, as you may know, business development was just named by LinkedIn as one of the uh, Jobs on the Rise, one of the top 20 jobs on the rise. Um, if you want to learn more about Denise, you can check her out on her LinkedIn page. Um, her courses are here in the chat, so you can click and, and get access to those courses. Denise, anything I missed that where people can find you? My th my website, thoughtleadershiplab.com. I've got an uh, email list, and I'd love for you to come on and uh, join it. Awesome. Awesome. Nat will put that in the chat as well. Um, thanks, everybody. Um, we appreciate all your comments. We'll, we'll go through them. And if there's any questions that we missed along the way, we'll uh, do our best to answer them in the coming days. And uh, we'll talk soon. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.